It is believed that King Sargon of Akkad, who ruled circa 2300 BC, was the first royal monarch to be documented in history. King Sargon's reign was during the Akkadian Empire. Welcome to He First Episode of Royalty Stories Channel. Ancient Mesopotamia went through a period at the end of the 24th century BC in which there was ongoing battle regarding who would dominate the area. Sargon of Akkad is generally regarded as the first emperor in history that has been documented. He was successful in merging a number of different Sumerian city-states, and he went on to conquer all of Mesopotamia to establish the Akkadian Empire. Because of the profound effect that his life and legacy had on the globe, people of the future referred to him as Sargon the Great, as a means to pay tribute to the magnitude of this impact. In the isolated community of Azuparanu, where Sargon's mother was a priestess of the Sumerian goddess of love and his father's identity remains unknown, an illegitimate boy by the name of Sargon was brought into the world. Sargon's mother was a priestess of the goddess of love. He was found by a man named Aki, who worked as a gardener for the king of Kish, Urzababa. His mother had placed him in a basket and sent him floating down the Euphrates River. Sargon was reared by Aki as if he were Aki's own child, and Aki finally promoted him to the role of cupbearer to the monarch after seeing how well Sargon performed in his duties. The position of cupbearer was particularly important during that era because of the high number of poisonings that took place during that time period. As a result, the job required the full faith of the king. During this historical period, Lugalza Gesi, who was the king of Uma at the time, led an army to seize the city-states of Sumer. Sumer was located in what is now modern-day Iraq. In the end, he led an assault against the city of Kish, which served as Sargon's base of operations. Sargon was sent by King Urzababa to deliver an offer of peace to Lugalzagesi. However, Lugalzagesi ignored the offer and instead requested that Sargon accompany him on his invasion of the region. Sargon complied with Lugalzagesi's request and joined him on the invasion. After receiving Sargon's approval, the three of them went on to topple the government of Kish and force Urzababa to go into hiding. Once a certain number of years had passed, tensions began to rise in the relationship between Lugalzagesi and Sargon. According to the story, there is a chance that the occurrence involves Sargon having an affair with Lugalzagesi's wife. This possibility exists because of the account. In any case, they quickly turned their backs on one another and marched towards one another in an aggressive stance in anticipation of a battle. After Sargon's triumphant victory over Lugalzagesi, the latter was taken out into the streets and chained up before being tormented and eventually being put to death. After being crowned as the new king of Kish, Sargon continued the invasion of Sumer that had been started by his predecessor. A sizable chunk of the realm had already been successfully unified thanks to Lugalzagesi's efforts, which provided Sargon with a substantial advantage. After completing his conquest of all of Sumer, he then set his sights on Assyria and Elam, both of which he was able to bring under his control. In due time, Sargon was able to accomplish something that no other ruler in the history of the Fertile Crescent had ever been able to do before. He brought the majority of the Fertile Crescent under his control. Sargon implemented innovative military tactics, such as the Phalanx Formation, which comprised of a densely packed group of troops armed with spears and massive shields. This formation was used by Sargon to defeat his enemies. About 2,000 years later, during the military conquests of Alexander the Great, 
the phalanx formation evolved into a vital method that was used by his army. Alexander's army utilized the phalanx formation. In the battlefield, Sargon was also able to earn a significant advantage over his opponents by making use of newly discovered technology, such as the composite bow. This allowed him to gain a major advantage over his opponents. Wood, horn, and sinew were the three materials that were utilized in the production of the composite bow. At the same distance, it could fire three times further and had twice the power of a regular bow. As a result of the advancements that were made in military technology, Sargon was successful in all 34 of the wars that he fought during his reign. After he had built his empire, it was he who chose the city of Akkad to serve as the seat of government for his realm. He was also responsible for the creation of the city of Babylon, which six centuries later during the reign of Hammurabi would develop into a strong political and commercial powerhouse. During the process of constructing his new empire, Sargon gave high-ranking positions to the people in whom he had the utmost confidence. These people were given the position of governor within his administration, which was responsible for over 65 different cities. In order to solidify his power even further, he made sure to nominate his daughter Enhejuana to the position of High Priestess of the God of Wisdom, which was one of the most powerful religious roles accessible during that time period. This allowed him to further consolidate his hold on power. This advantage provided Sargon with the capacity to exert a substantially bigger influence over his realm which turned out to be a key component in his ability to maintain his grasp on power. During his reign, Sargon said that he had acquired dominion over the four corners of the cosmos, which he described as an area ranging from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea. This assertion was made during the time that Sargon was in power. The Akkadian Empire is credited with establishing the first postal service in the world as well as making the most efficient use of bureaucracy on a massive scale throughout the duration of human history. This accomplishment earned the empire a place of prominence among historians. In addition, the empire played a key role in the development of Mesopotamia's transportation network by paving roads and establishing irrigation systems. These improvements were made during the empire's reign. The permanent army of 5,400 men that Sargon had stationed in the city of Akkad gave him a substantial competitive advantage when compared to the armies of other kings because they were based in other cities. But, in spite of these achievements, the people continued to rebel, which required Sargon's intervention in order to put an end to the numerous rebellions that occurred. According to the Sumerian king list, Sargon reigned for 56 years before he died of natural causes in the year 2279 BC. His death occurred during his reign. The throne of Sargon was inherited by Sargon's son Rimish, who ruled for nine years before succumbing to his own illness and being succeeded by his brother Manishtushu. Manishtushu was the son of Rimush's brother Manishtushu. The Akkadian Empire remained on top for another century until approximately 2150 BC, when it was dethroned by the Gushan people who had overrun Sumer and taken control of the region. Because of the broad spreading of tales concerning Sargon's brilliance in both Assyrian and Babylonian sources, his status as a legendary character was almost instantaneously established. These narratives were found in both Assyrian and Babylonian sources. The insatiable desire for power that Sargon possessed enabled him to construct the first empire in the history of the planet and to establish his dominion over all of Mesopotamia. If you like this video and want to see more content similar to it, consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, 
and clicking the bell icon at the bottom of the page. Thank you and see you in next episodes.